Hi, I'm Aubrey Going, and today we're going to take a look at some of the anatomy that can influence ankle mobility. So here we can see a foot and a lower leg, and we can get an idea of the shape of the talus, or rather the talar dome, and how this might influence movement between the end of the tibia and fibula. And this is the talar dome, or the top of the talus. At the back, this area is narrower and it gets broader as it comes forward. Now that wedge shape is quite important because when we look at the space here between the tibia and the fibula on the outside, we can see that the, the shape of them is almost like a mortise and tenon joint. So they are going to sit either side of that dome of the talus. So the talar dome has to be able to act almost like a rocker mechanism. If there is too much restriction, if that space reduces, the joint can jam up and then we get all kinds of problems. The body has to do workarounds in order for us to be able to walk, to propel ourselves forward. So it'll add things like if the rocker motion is stopping too soon, it will compress the arch of the foot or it will cause us to turn our foot in or out. More commonly, the foot tends to turn out and we break over the big toe. So we kind of roll over the big toe. In some cases, the foot will rotate in and we break over the little toe, but both of those are kind of dysfunctional. They're pushing those toes in dysfunctional directions. So we want to avoid that. We want a good rocker motion. The other thing that that will do is if we have to turn the foot in or out to walk properly, it creates excessive rotation at the knee, and that can cause knee issues, particularly kind of things like meniscus tears, splitting of cartilage, patellar tracking issues, a whole host of other issues. So really important to get this space corrected. So what are the things that influence this space? Well, there's kind of two primary things. There will be the position of the talus. It can either shunt forward or shunt back. Typically when it shunts forward, it's because of excessive plantar flexion. Sometimes that's from wearing heels. More often it's from things like, you know, running on your toes, premature heel lift, tight calves. The other thing is narrowing of this space because posterior tibialis is tight. Let's adjust our angle for a second and take a look at posterior tip. So we've made the model smaller here, but we can actually see posterior tibialis sitting either side. It's actually sitting in the space between the tibia and the fibula. So not only is it coming down the inside of the ankle and acting as a plantar flexor and an inverter, but it also has the ability, the unfortunate ability, that when it gets tight, it can actually pull these bones together. And that can really interfere with the space and the rocker motion that the tibia and to a lesser extent the fibula because it's kind of to the outside, the way they can move over this talar dome. So really important to get the tone corrected in posterior tibialis. So in most people it's typically short, tight and facilitated. So we want to try and restore extensibility. So treating posterior tibialis is going to be really important, but then also looking at the positioning of the talus in that space to make sure that it is seated in its centric position. That means it's not shunted forward or back or to the side or twisted within the joint, because uh, that's one of the things that can create what's called a high ankle sprain. Sometimes we get this um, tearing of the retinaculum simply because that wedge of the talus has acted as a lever, and when we've planted and twisted our foot, it actually forces those bones apart and can tear the retinaculum here above the ankle. So in terms of corrective work, we would really want to treat posterior tibialis, and we would want to normalize the position of the talus. The two of those will increase rocker motion, which means when we go to walk, we'll be able to actually propel ourselves forward and have normal gait, rather than creating one of those dysfunctional patterns. So that's just a quick anatomy review, just giving us a clear idea of how the tibia really needs to be able to have the right degree of rocker motion back and forth across that talar dome. In our upcoming class, we'll be showing how to assess and treat, as well as looking at some home care for this. So you can find details on this on our website, it's hcd.ie, uh, or pop us an email. If there's other subjects you'd like to see us cover in upcoming classes, let us know by emailing info at hcd.ie. Thanks for your time.